How does the presence of others impact us? What is social facilitation, social loafing, and de-individuation? Recall that social psychologists study the impact of the social context on the individual. In this video, we'll examine three processes that describe how we're influenced by the presence of others. First, being around other people tends to elicit our dominant responses. Second, when working in groups, social loafing prevents us from putting forth the same amount of effort we would if we were working alone. And third, de-individuation reduces our level of behavioral restraint. Let's take a closer look at each one. Social facilitation is the process whereby the presence of others enhances our performance on easy tasks, but it impairs our performance on difficult ones. The focus of our attention here is the individual in a social context, not necessarily in a group. The process begins with the presence of others. They arouse us psychologically, meaning we're aware of their presence. Then, we respond with our dominant response, and our performance depends on the task. Again, on easy tasks, we tend to perform it correctly and performance increases. But on difficult tasks, we tend to perform it incorrectly and performance decreases. If you've been playing an instrument or speaking a second language for years, you'll probably perform quite well in front of other people. If you only recently started learning this skill, your performance will be less than stellar when others are watching or listening. Over time, as you practice and compete, you'll strengthen your dominant response so that you perform as well for others as you do when you're alone. Social loafing occurs when we produce lesson groups working on additive tasks, like a group project in class, a fundraiser, or tub of war, as we discussed earlier. Social loafing happens because we share responsibility for the finished product with our fellow group members. As we increase the size of the group, we'd expect the performance of the group to increase, but this is not usually the case. After about five to seven group members, adding more members provides little return on performance levels. There's some evidence that social loafing is more likely to occur in individualistic cultures. People in collectivistic cultures have been shown to take more offense to this behavior because it's contradictory to their values and norms. Fortunately, social psychologists have identified a number of strategies we can use to prevent social loafing. First, keep groups small. Three to five is probably best, but up to seven can also be effective, depending on the group setting. Second, take the time to build high levels of group cohesion. The more unified the group, the more likely each member is to contribute. Third, match people with tasks that they find meaningful. This helps ensure they remain engaged in the group's activities. Fourth, identify and evaluate individual contributions. This is one of the most important steps we can take. In a group project, for example, we could ask each student to submit their own slides instead of asking the group to submit a single file. Fifth, demonstrate the importance of individual contributions. Make it known how each member helps the group achieve its goals. And finally, clarify the consequences of poor performance. It's important that we train group members in what's expected of them and what consequences they'll face if they don't fulfill the expectations. De-individuation is the loss of a person's sense of individuality and the reduction of normal constraints against deviant behavior. When personal identities submerge, social identities emerge and conformity to the group increases. This is a collective phenomenon that only occurs in the presence of others. De-individuation is one of the factors involved in online bullying and taunting. Your textbook discusses another example, and these two photos were collected from news outlets that reported on the incident. In 2015, after the University of Kentucky lost the men's basketball championship to the University of Louisville, the fans rioted in the streets. They caused fires, broke windows, pulled street signs out of the ground, and turned over cars. As members of a crowd, individuals behaved in ways that they wouldn't normally. So what causes this to happen? When accountability cues reduce the cost of defiance. This can happen when an individual is in a large crowd, and it's especially likely when they're wearing a mask to conceal their identity. Also, when attentional cues focus attention away from the self. This leads us to react to the immediate situation, instead of thinking carefully using our moral code. This can happen when loud music is playing or when bright lights are flashing. All of this increases arousal and anonymity and decreases self-awareness and personal responsibility. Add drugs or alcohol to the mix and de-individuation is even more likely. This process is one of the reasons individuals act out of character in some situations. Can you think of specific situations in which these features are present? 
If you guessed Halloween events, online forums, and concerts, you're correct. Now that we've covered performance in the presence of others, you'll learn whether groups outperform individuals in the next video.